You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. So, for our second in the series on Jephthah, did Jephthah slaughter his daughter? The key text for discussing this question is Judges 11.31. Most English translations, Jephthah promises to Yahweh, if he's successful, something like, the first person to meet him when he comes home shall be the Lord's, offered up by me as a burnt offering. This suggests that Jephthah does what God preserved Abraham from doing, and promised, as it turns out, his daughter as a sacrifice. And this is the traditional interpretation, and has been for a very long time. A friend of mine's pastor claimed that promised her into temple service might be a better translation. Sounds good, but is he right? The literal translation of the key words reads, Shall be two or four Yahweh, and I will offer him as a sacrifice. It's quite clear. It's not a translation issue. But there is a question of understanding. You see, the English translators have pretty much all understood the words literally, perhaps with the Abraham story in mind. But you could understand them, and I think the pastor did, metaphorically. Offering the person as a sacrifice to God means giving them over to temple service instead of keeping them at home. So what happens when Jephthah comes to fulfill his vow? His daughter is the first person to greet him. One of the things we have to deal with if we want to go with this more gentle interpretation is the depth of response by both father and daughter. Does it fit giving her into temple service as a nun? Or do their responses imply something much more terrible? It's not clear. You see, in the ancient world, having offspring to continue your line was so much more vital than it is today. And this daughter is Jephthah's only child, the only hope of offspring to continue his line and to remember his name. Now let's look at the coda or punchline of the story, and I'm not quite sure which it is, but the last verse. In verse 40, whether it's a coda or a punchline, or both, the pastor again wants to translate differently. Traditionally, it's rendered, for four days every year the daughters of Israel would go out to lament the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite. This time, the literal rendering is less clear-cut. For four days every year the daughters of Israel would go out to sing the story of the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite. It seems to me the pastor's quite right that the word in Hebrew doesn't necessarily mean lament. Tana means to celebrate or commemorate, which in this case might mean to lament. The justification for translating it as lament comes in the preceding verses. When Jephthah's daughter asked to be allowed time to bewail her virginity on the hills, in verses 37 and 38. Here, Bacha, mourn, is used and the situation is quite clear. So, I'm moderately convinced by this pastor, and I think by some modern scholars if I could get to their works, but uh, I'm in a majority world context and they're not easily accessible, to soften the traditional reading of the story. Which reading will you go with in the case of the people versus Jephthah? You be the judge. Bye for now.